Welcome to chapter one of our study. We'll be looking at the sketch of strategy. In other words, to introduce what strategy is. So there'll be different theories illustrating about strategies. So for example, one of the theories is according to Joker, strategy is a pattern of activities to achieve objective and then adapts the scope, resources, operations to changes in the environment in the long term. So we'll focus on the word long term strategy. It's all about long term stuff. So what do I mean by long term stuff? So let's see an example here. So suppose that you're selling high end shoes. You're selling at a very high price. And then you like to change your strategy to sell these at the low price. So how can you do it? If you want to sell it at the low price, first of all, you need to switch to a low cost supplier. That can be done very easily, perhaps. And then perhaps you're, you're going to be moving your sale online. So for example, you're going to start selling online instead of selling in the physical stores. And that takes time for you to build up a website, perhaps. And then you may be changing the ways to advertise your business. So for example, instead of using the traditional way of uh, advertising your high-end shoes in the very high-class magazines. So perhaps you'll be advertising your high-end shoes or low-end shoes in the supermarket. Okay, you need to deal with the dealer. Okay, you need to restructure your supply chain. So in order to make your price lower, make your costs lower, you need to spend a lot of time and money to do that. So this is what I mean by long-term stuff. And this is why when I teach strategy, it's very important to understand what are the components in strategy. So we will change one component, other components may need to change as well. So first component is all core activities in, in, inside the business. So core activity inside the business is talking about how you're going to be storing things, which means the inbound logistics, how you're going to be manufacturing things, which means the ways they're going to produce the product may be better than the way from your competitors, for example. How you're going to be distributing things to your customer, whether or not you will deliver your goods on time or just in time or very late, or you're targeting your customers uh, who are based in the overseas countries and so on and so forth. How are you going to be marketing and sales your products? How are you going to be providing the after-sales services? So for example, for a tuition provider here, so for example here for the APC, if you enroll in our ACCA course, we will also provide the after-sales service in terms of the tutor support and also the customer support. And if you have any questions uh, during your studies, and you can ask your tutor, uh, something like that. So how are you going to buy things, which means the procurement, whether or not you can buy things at a low price. How are you going to manage your people, which means the HR stuff. How are you going to make sure that you put enough resources in the technology, particularly for the research and development part. And then where does your money come from, which means the firm infrastructure. So core activity, we'll see there will be different activities in there. And what would be the core activity in your business? So for example, for Kuchi, yeah, the design part, which means the technology part, is the core activities. For the Airbnb, yes, it's the, it's the host network where you can uh, check in the uh, different apartments, houses, I don't know, uh, for your vacation, uh, I don't know, through the Airbnb. Okay, I never use that, but yeah, Airbnb, the core activity will be the technology because it maintains very strong host networks and makes sure that uh, insurance is in place for uh, any host on that particular network and makes sure that the source of houses are trustable. So let's move on to the next element of strategy, which means the core resources of your strategy. Uh, the core resource talking about whether or not you've got a strong brand, a strong supply and dealer, customer base, uh, the, the core customer base and the loyal customers that you have, the loyal management teams that you have and also some of the intangible asset granted by government. 
So these are your core resources. So for example, the Coca-Cola, the brands, is the core resource. The Toyota, based in Japan, and due to a limited amount of land, they use the just-in-time JIT, inventory management system, by producing things based on the actual order placed by the customer. For Alibaba, it's a, a Chinese company, and is the online marketplace provider, the core resource, of course, supply and chain, customer base and brand. Tesla, the core resources will be its brand and also the battery production uh, technology, of course. For Uber, yeah, I've used Uber quite a lot, really. So for example, the core resource would be the uh, search pricing technology and, and, and to make sure to adjust the prices based on the changes in demand uh, during the peak and chop times. So core resources, uh, if you lost your brand and you to consider perhaps an other core resource in your company will be the supply chain. You need to maintain that supply chain. So for example, uh, switching to a low cost and low price model, perhaps I'm not particularly sure. So it really depends on which companies that you're working in. But I would say change in one element would cause changes in other elements. So this is what I mean by strategy. Another element is the value proposition. So how are we going to define experience by using a product? So for example, when I use iPhone, yeah, it's quite simple. Uh, that's the value proposition for Apple. For Uber, it's quite cheap. For Zara, it's fast trend. For YK Media, it's all about knowledge, okay? When I talk about the value, what will be the value delivered to me or the value of proposition, I would say YK Media, yes, I can learn a lot from it. In terms of customer relationships, okay, and other elements in the strategy, different businesses will have different ways to deal with their clients or customers. So for example, they may have personal assistance by writing emails to a client or dedicated personnel personal assistance, for example, if you go to the luxury, store, uh, luxury stores or uh, when you're using a banking service, uh, the, the staff in the bank or the luxury store will serve you. Or self-service, uh, for example, if you go to IKEA to buy the furniture or tables, uh, you need to pick them up by yourself. Or perhaps the company may use automated service so, for example, a company based in uh, Hong Kong as the special uh, administrative region in China. So, for example, Meituan, okay, uh, provide automatic ranking service for different types of services, similar to Google. Okay, if you uh, want to have your dinner into what restaurant, you will see the ranking first of all and it will provide automatic ranking by the system of that company. So another way to deal with the relationship with the customer is to use community. Uh, so for example, an example would be GoDaddy. Uh, GoDaddy is a, is a platform to provide servers uh, to different corporations or individuals. And for technical services in there, GoDaddy would use the community and posting questions or the problems that you're facing in there and asking experts to give a comment or give a straight answer uh, into that community. And that's how it, how it works. And also co-creation co okay, is another way to uh, maintain relationship with customers. For example, if you go to YouTube or TikTok, um, we do invite customers to provide their, pub, uh, their, their public comments and to allow customers to publish their content for public use in there. So for different companies, for example, for Tesla, uh, they will acquire customers through test drive, okay? so usually using the dedicated personnel assistance or personal assistance, if you like. IKEA, as I said before, the you to pick pick them up by yourself, self service. Airbnb provides home insurance to hosts, 
to encourage them to provide their homes to other travellers and to uh, make sure that they use the, for example, the community style and, and, and also the automated service. So mainly for the automated service, you can see the ranking of different sources of homes. So you can choose, decide to choose uh, which host to live in. Another element in your strategy is channels. So channels mean where you're going to be selling your things. Either via the physical stores or the online marketplace. So for example, the Amazon online sales, luxuries, usually the uh, traditional physical stores. Apple, uh, buy an iPhone, the combination of the physical and online stores. Uh, it really depends on which companies that you're working in. And then another element is the customer segment. Okay? So which type of customers that you're focusing on? And you can segment your market or segment your customer. Customer means market, market means customer. So you can segment your customer or segment the market uh, by, for example, Generation Z or Millennials uh, or perhaps the fashionistas or using celebrities or perhaps from B2B to B2C, some of your corporate clients, some of your individual clients. Uh, so for example, for Alibaba, uh, it's the Chinese company. They segment their market based on B2C, B2B, business to clients or business to customer, B2C, and the business to business, corporate customer. You also need to think about the cost and revenue structure when you're setting up your strategy. So either you're going to sell a high price or a low price and then for different types of products or services. So for different businesses, they will have different strategies. For example, Primark is one of my favorite stores. They sell low price stuff. Uh, for another, uh, my favorite company, it's called Joseph Chinny and Sons selling high-end shoes, yes, very high price, based in the UK. And for Tesla, you can't see any dealers selling Tesla cars. You need to buy their cars from Tesla stores. Okay? And they uh, sell it, I mean, they, they directly interact with the final customer. For Wikimedia, okay, the community donations that they receive their income from the donations from different parties and for Woober it is the platform and then it gets commission for each ride completed on the platform okay so this is how they can get the revenue this is how they are gonna be incurring their costs and need to see whether the revenue or cost will be high or low and that's what I mean by cost and revenue structure this is very important because we you change your strategies, for example, instead of selling things at $1, you like to sell things at $10. So perhaps you need to eliminate the way that you sell it online. Perhaps you need to build a very good physical store in order to sell at a high price, perhaps. You also need to consider the key stakeholders involved. So for example, the government, you need to think about the taxes, the local suppliers, or the international suppliers in terms of lead time, in terms of the money in currencies that you're paying for, in terms of the uh, goods you're receiving, where not quality is high or low. Investors, where does your money come from? The bloggers can help you sell your things. The management teams that you have, you should consider the staff turnover, you should also consider the customers involved as well. So what would be their perception on your products? and their abilities to buy a product, so at a high price or low price, and so on and so forth. And in the past, Gucci is one of the luxury stores, has tried to sell things uh, by advertising their products from bloggers, or we can call it as the influencers. And this, in the past, was good, but after that, there will be there's been very uh, 
lots of fake products of the Kuchi products uh, later on. And this is why Kuchi abandoned the idea since then. So you should consider the key stakeholders involved. Airbnb, uh, think about in different governments, for example, in France, Paris government bans the Airbnb in there. And also Google is banned by the Chinese government here. Alibaba, okay, need to work with the Alipay to allow customers to make payments online. So Alipay is one of the companies in Alibaba. And then it needs to think about how to integrate customers uh, into different platforms in that. Consider the customers in other words. And also Wikimedia, you should consider different customers as well. Their customers are called community members and to make sure that they quality control their inputs onto the platform to make sure their content uh, are accurate. So these are all elements of strategies you need to consider. If you change one element from another, you need to change all other elements. And this is what I mean by long-term stuff. So let's read that definition by Jocker again. Strategies are pattern of activities, is how you do things to achieve the objective of the organisation. So profit-making organisations having the objective to make money, to make profit. And then you have to adapt your scope, okay? So the things you're going to do, the resources that you have, so for example, the brand, so whether or not you have the good management team, whether or not you have the good brand name. And then you have to adapt your operations of how you do things in a quick and timely, or perhaps in a high quality manner to environmental changes. So you need to focus on the changes in the environment and make sure that you're ready. So for example, the laws and regulation changed, so you need to change your operations as well. So perhaps by leaving this country and focusing on another country's market and in the long term, which means if you're going to change one element, other elements have to be changed in terms of all core activities, such as the HR, core resources, such as brand name, value propositions, how you're going to define your experience, customer relationships, how you're going to deal with your customers, for example, using automated services, channels where to sell your product, perhaps online, customer segments, perhaps you're focusing on the corporate customers, the cost and revenue structures, whether or not you're going to set a high or low cost, and then high or low price. And then you need to consider the key stakeholders involved. I always teach my students that businesses may try to innovate the way that they can do business. And this is what I mean by business model. It's just to be the formula that they do business to get the money in advance or to delay the payments later on, or perhaps to sell things more at a particular moment in time, or perhaps each time. There'll be different business models there. So for example, for example the first business model is called subscription-based model. So usually you can see in different service providers, so for example, in mainland China, we have the Baidu Cloud, Google Music, you need to pay a monthly fee. And for example, the LinkedIn, you may have been using that, is using the subscription model. You're paying the fees for that, and then uh, the platform will utilize your fees and to provide you with lots of benefits in there. And then once you put your, uh, pay your fees in there, and the platform will get uh, very solid and very stable income from your side. And if the customer base increases, and of course, the subscription model will certainly uh, benefit the company and also the clients or the customers a lot. And another example for using the subscription model uh, is ACCA, charging you the, uh, the yearly fee, the annual fee, if you like, the, the, the membership fee, okay, and then the fee for students as well. Some businesses may use bundling model. Okay, which means um, instead of selling this and that at five and five dollar, I'll sell them at a bundle at eight dollar, giving you a discount. So for example, McDonald's always did that stuff. 
Another business model is the free plus premium model, giving you the free of charge product first and then charging you a high price. Or perhaps the next model is the razor blaze model, which means selling you the high price first, high price product first, and then lower price services later. So for example, Apple. Apple sells iPhone at a very high price, and then you will need to further download the apps from the Apple store at a lower price. Another business model is the product to service model. So which means you do not have to buy the asset, you simply enjoy the service. For example, enjoy the services from the Uber platform or the mobile, uh, it's, the, it's the bicycle. It's the bicycle company anyway. Another business model is the leasing model, uh, which means for businesses, they don't buy, for example, the photocopier machine. They simply lease it because they simply pay the monthly fee. If the, the photocopier machine is not working, and it's fine, and the lessor will deal with that, will we'll, we'll, we'll work this out. And uh, usually, that the business leasing that particular machine will have, can print unlimited amounts of papers each and every month. And that's how it works. Crowdsourcing model is where we've looked at YouTube and TikTok, and also Wikimedia, uh, allowing customer to publish their contents in because for the crowdsourcing model businesses, for example, for YouTube itself, it doesn't have any videos at all. One for one model, which means I sell this to you at one dollar, I will take 0.01 dollar and donate it to the charity. A uh, common example is the Tom's company. Franchise model, which means I can allow you to utilize the way that I run the business. And then I will charge you first of all the upfront fee, which means the franchise fee. And then I will share with you, which means if you've got revenue of $1 million, I will share 5% of that as the management charge in each and every year. Some businesses, for example, McDonald's and Subway, they use the franchise model. And for McDonald's, they've got the franchise fee upfront payment from the customer, from the client, I would say, and then utilize this payment to buy a lot of land in different cities. Okay, get the money and then for the long-term investment. This is how they work. Producer model, on the other hand, allowing uh, different outsourcing parties to assemble products, but finally, it will do the final assembly work at this head office. So for example, Apple and Dell computer uh, use the producer model. Number 11, no freeze strategy, which means no value added stuff. Um, some businesses may use the no freeze strategy, so for example, Madonna. Quite standardized restaurants, and they sell products at a very cheap price compared to high-end restaurants. H&M, okay, staff in there, are responsible for refill racks and shelves, but they are not going to help customers in their shopping experience in an active manner. And then China United Airlines, okay, which means the budget airlines companies, they don't provide the value added stuff. Okay, they simply allow you to take the flight and, and that's it. If you want a bottle of water, you should pay for it. Uh, the advantage of the no freeze model is where we can get rid of the non-value adding things because the customer may, may not want these and then may not want to pay price on that. And that's why get rid of these and charging at a low price, we can expand the market by selling the items uh, in a in a higher volume compared with other strategies perhaps. So these are business models commonly used by real businesses uh, in the real life. I would say the sketch of strategy gives you a very solid understanding of what it means 
of in terms of strategy, when you are answering questions later on by using these different business models or different other models that will be seeing later on in the course, it will be more sensible to for you to give your recommendation or conclusion to the examiner by demonstrating your very strong commercial acumen professional skill. And this end, the chapter one section here, I'll be looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye. A P C accounting for your future.